Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on passing arguments to a procedure in VBA. So I have here an Excel workbook that has two user forms on it. One that has an argument that's passed to a procedure and one that doesn't. I'm going to use these to show you how to pass an argument to a procedure. So here's what the user form does. Uh, you have a participant that's selected and you have the spin button and you can move through the various participants and if you make a change, like if I change this value to 50, it's going to update that. Really it's updating whether you make a change or not. And then I have another user form that's configured a little differently but it does the same thing. And I have a video that shows you how to build these user forms titled Configuring a Spin Button on an Excel user form. So let's go into the code view of this workbook. It's Alt F11. And you can see this is the code for the object I call main form, which is the first user form. And then here is the code for the project I'm going to edit. So you can see here that other than initialize, which is the code that runs when the user form initializes, I have spin button, spin down, and spin up. And then I have another subroutine named update that just updates the values uh, offset from the active cell by one column and two columns, namely the pretest value and the post-test value. Now this code works uh, quite well, but it's a little inefficient because it has repetitiveness. So this section of code in spin down is only one number different from this section of code in spin up, and it's the row. Spin up is a negative one, and spin down is a one. So although this code works, uh, particularly if you wanted to expand this project, you'd want to make this a little more efficient. And passing an argument to another procedure is one way this could be done. So as you can see, both these uh, spin down and spin up subroutines call update. So they run update before they do anything else. So I'm going to take the code from spin up and just drag it down to update. This will make a space here to make it a little easier to see. And I'm going to delete the code for spin down. And then under the subroutine update, I'm going to add this code inside of the parentheses. By reference, r as integer. So what you're saying here is that now this subroutine expects the argument r to come in as an integer when it's called. So an argument is a variable that we're passing to a subroutine. So I know that the uh, r is going to be row, and it's just going to be this one value. So now I'll just change the update call for spin up. We know that. We know that's negative 1. So now you can see, as soon as I put that parenthesis, it's prompting me for r as integer. It knows that the subroutine needs this variable. Now, of course, you could also make this optional, but in this case, it needs it. So I'm going to make this negative 1. And similarly, I'm going to change the spin down to 1. So as you can see, this is a lot cleaner. It would be easy to add different features to this code. It's not nearly as cluttered. Let's see if it actually does the same thing. So moving back to the worksheet, you see it loads correctly. It moves up and down. If I change a value, say this one to 52, that works. If I say I change this value here to 58, 
that also works. So I pass that argument to another subroutine in the same block of code behind the user form. If we go back to the code view, you would access this by right-clicking on the user form and selecting view code. So as a project grows, even though this is certainly more efficient than the way I had it, it might be convenient to put this code in a module and then have this, these subroutines call to that module and then th that module would run the subroutine and it would keep all this code from having to be displayed here, from being stored here. So to do that, we first go up to insert and module. I'm going to leave it as the default name, module 1. And I'm going to take this entire subroutine, just as it is, and cut it and paste it to module 1. Now it's important to recognize that this code will not work yet. Because now we're no longer in the user form 1 code. We're in module 1 code. So VBA is not going to know what text box is being referred to when I have these two objects, text box 1 and text box 2. So we just need to further clarify where these text boxes are located. And we know they're in user form 1. And you see, once you type that and put the period or the full stop, it comes up. So I'm just going to copy that prefix and paste it in front of all the places where I see the text box. And there's another change you'd have to make. Since you did move out to a module, now it's not going to be able to find update. It's going to look for update here. You have to further clarify this as module one dot update. You can see it automatically comes up. And the same thing here, module one dot update. So now as you can see, uh, this code is even cleaner. There's less code here. It refers out to this module to update the values and move to the next cell. So let's test out this code. So we see for participant 1005, it's value 50 and 50. That comes up. If I want to change this to 55, that works. This one's 38 and 39. I want to change this to 40. So the user form functions in exactly the same way, but the way it's typed out in the code in the module and then the code behind the user form, it's just more orderly and clear and easier to make updates to in the future. Now one of the changes you could also make here, it's not important for this particular workbook, but some programmers prefer to use functions. That's very easy to change here instead of a subroutine. And highlight sub and simply type function. And you can see it even changes this to end function for you. And if I go back to the workbook, you can see that it still operates in the same manner. So still actually does the same thing. It's just a matter of preference in this case to use a function instead of a subroutine. The reason it does not matter for this particular project is because we're sending an argument to this, in this case, function, or what was a subroutine, and we're not expecting it to alter that value and send it back. Functions are capable of doing that, and subroutines are not. So if this were a different type of project where we wanted to send a value to a function and have it change that value and then return the new value back to the original subroutine. We'd want to use a function in that case. Another reason you may want to use a function instead of a subroutine is a function can be called directly from a worksheet. So if I wanted to create a quick function 
that would say double a value of an integer. I'll call this one function double value by reference x as integer. And double value would be equal to x times 2. So if I went back to the worksheet, let's say I put a 4 in the cell E5, and I use that function I just created, and then reference that 4, it'll return an 8. So just multiply the 4 times 2, and then return that value. I hope you found this video on passing arguments to subroutines and functions in VBA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.